living and working in Switzerland, the next part in my mini-series, living and working abroad, coming right up. Hey, what's cooking guys? Uh, Marcel here again from Slamming It Out. Thank you for watching my video and today I'm really excited to introduce a very small country in Europe to you. And this little country is called Switzerland and it's in the heart of Europe. And this is the country where I have actually started my career abroad. As you know, these videos I'm shooting now for the past few weeks uh, are all about my different workstations, places where I have worked around the world. I worked in 11 countries on four different continents. That was a big journey and every week I'm introducing a different country in my series Living and Working Abroad. Switzerland. So it was in 1998 when I suddenly got fired from my job. I don't uh, be scared. Nothing uh, really terrible happened. They just had to lay off some young chefs at the time because they had to do some uh, uh, tweaks and twists with the operation and they ran out of money somehow and they had to close down one or two restaurants. So that's why they had to lay me off. Of course, it was a big shock at the time because I was happy in Berlin. I was 21 years old. I had my friends here. I had everything here in Germany and I just started to build uh, uh, myself, uh, to build up an existence here, you know, like I had a, wanted to uh, get a flat, an apartment and, you know, all these kind of things. I had a car and, and stuff like that. So I really felt very comfortable. And then suddenly my boss uh, called me and said, Marcel, now we have to talk and I have to let you know, unfortunately, I have to lay you off among other people. Big shock. I didn't know what to do. And um, I had a colleague at the time, his name was, was Karsten and Karsten uh, worked in Switzerland already before for many, many years. And sometimes he shared some funny stories, you know, and he was talking about, ah, it's great money and a lot of party and uh, we had a good time there. And why don't you go to Switzerland, Marcel? And I was not interested at all. I was happy in Berlin. I was happy in Germany and I wanted to stay. But now, uh, after the shock, after being laid off, I was really, really thinking what to do. And I, I, I thought, you know, why, why don't I give it a shot? And I applied in Switzerland and uh, they invited me for an interview. I went there and worked for one day for a few hours. And I, I saw, oh, wow, that's, that's nice here. Uh, I actually worked at the Mövenpick Hotel in Zurich airport. Uh, right at the airport, a very famous hotel. It's a flagship property, I think still today, the Mervyn Pick Hotel Zurich Airport. That was my first workstation and I signed the contract because simply also the money was great. I earned almost double the salary than in Germany and that was a great thing as a young man. And the team was great. A lot of young people, I remember a lot of uh, German people there all young, all about my age. And we stayed opposite the hotel. There was a staff accommodation. So I had my own private single room, fully furnished. Of course, I had to pay some rent, which was actually expensive, about 660 US dollar for, a, I don't know, like a 12 square meter room, but it was fully furnished. But, you know, it was a was a was a great payoff, you know. Uh, I had my single room with the other uh, the other colleagues. They lived near uh, the next door, and uh, yeah, I just walked five minutes across the the parking lot, and I reached the hotel, and I had a great salary. So that was just a great thing. And I want to be very honest with you here. The first six months into my contract. I was not really shocked in a positive meaning. So, uh, so yeah, I worked, I earned my salary. It was a lot of work to do, but I missed my friends and I uh, went home. I think every six or eight weeks I was traveling home back to Berlin because I just missed them. Because remember, I had a very good time in Germany before I went to Switzerland. So, you know, the first six to eight months was not really exciting. And then things suddenly changed. We got new people on board, new people. 
uh, entered the team and I got along with these people much uh, better than with the other colleagues and then the, the time became really really great and after one and a half years I decided actually to stay in Switzerland. I changed the employer but uh, I was clear working abroad is my thing. It was never really my attention already then and that was at the end of 1999 so 21 years ago it was never my attention actually to return to Germany for working for taking up a job returning to Germany to visit my friends and my family it's a different thing and I have been doing this but it was very early when I actually tasted the the great life of freedom and success and money and friends and all these kind of things it was a great impact this time in Zurich my first work station at the uh, Mövenpick Hotel Zürich Airport had made a great, great impact already then and was defining for my entire career afterwards. I don't know if I mentioned that already but altogether I stayed around three and a half years in Switzerland from 1998 until 2001 right before the attacks in uh, New York September 11th in October 2001 I actually left Switzerland and actually moved to the United States but this is a different story we want to stay in Switzerland today I worked in Zurich in Arosa and in Lucerne uh, all three are very nice places as most of you probably have seen pictures of Switzerland already or you have seen YouTube videos already Switzerland is a gorgeous country a very small country with about I think eight and a half million inhabitants and uh, in this country three languages are spoken this is the Swiss German French and Italian and I must say I really started to like Swiss people because they are different than German people and maybe some people now start to laugh about it and say because German people are considered very I don't know uh, stiff and, and strict and straight uh, without any sense of humor <laughs> which is uh, you know I'm starting to laugh now it was a great joke right yeah that is, is kind of true you know especially people from Berlin so people like me we I think we are even more stiff and our our uh, humor is completely different I think uh, when we crack jokes in Berlin nobody can laugh about them except Berlin people and the Swiss people they are also I think considered even more stiff than Germans but actually it's not true if you live in Switzerland and you deal with these people these Swiss people you will see how actually open-minded they are and they're way more open-minded than German people believe it or not that was my experience and I I love the Swiss for being so open-minded also being so relaxed and uh, taking it very easy that's really true I was surprised but since that day I got along with these people I always feel very very comfortable comfortable among Swiss people and that's probably also one of their secrets to success because you know Switzerland is a very very popular country around the world many many people want to immigrate to Switzerland of course that's not possible but you have many wealthy people who are living in Switzerland incognito of course nobody knows that they have a house there and stuff like that and of course we all know that a lot of wealthy people also transfer their money into Switzerland because until recently uh, they could do it uh, without being noticed but yeah Switzerland is very very welcoming I don't think we don't need to talk much about hospitality or the hospitality industry in Switzerland it is top notch it's world class many five-star hotels are there many five-star hotel chains are in place in Zurich and in other cities famous chefs are uh, coming from Switzerland and they're also cooking in other countries I have met I met a few of them they are not in such a great number like let's say German chefs but you have a Swiss chefs and you have Swiss general managers and you have other Swiss people working around the globe and it is a strong Swiss community even stronger than the German community because it is a smaller country but uh, meeting Swiss colleagues 
meeting people from Switzerland abroad was always a great pleasure and it was always a great pleasure working with them together, absolutely. And there are other things what made me fall in love with Switzerland that is a little bit similar to Germany but everybody who went to Switzerland or everybody who saw a, a, a video or a movie about Switzerland must confirm that Switzerland is a very clean country and it is cleaner than in Germany 100% it's considered very safe. Yeah, that's why also many foreigners love to actually live there permanently. This is true. I have never experienced any issues as far as I remember. And then of course the, the beauty of this country. If you love mountains, if you love snow and uh, if you love uh, valleys and greenery and all this cliche stuff also, which is not actually a cliche, it's really when you go there, you know, the beauty of the country is just amazing and you have to see it for yourself. It's the diversity also because it, uh, Switzerland consists of uh, actually four, uh, not nationalities, but they actually speak four language. The other one is, I think it's called Reto Romanian in the southeastern part of Switzerland, but Swiss German, French and Italian is uh, spoken in Switzerland. So that is when you, let's say, travel from Zurich down to the southern part of Switzerland, it's called the Tessin, yeah? When you travel to Lugano or Locarno, this is already the Tessin. Uh, I don't know how you say that in English, in the German language, you call it the Tessin, which is a state in Switzerland. I think it's even the, the, the largest state in Switzerland. And that's the Italian speaking part. And the temperatures are already like in Italy, palm trees are growing and have beautiful lakes and, and mountains. The scenery is just like from the movies. So this diversity, you know, and then I've never been actually to this French speaking part, but I have seen pictures and I know people who work there and, and live there. So it's, it's beautiful. I recommend if you uh, travel to Switzerland that you make a tour around the country. What about Swiss food? Uh, I'm pretty sure some of you guys have heard about or even tasted Swiss food or you even had some Swiss food and didn't even know that it actually stems from Switzerland. And then, for example, the uh, Bircher Müsli, this is how you pronounce it in German. I don't know how you pronounce it in English, but in German it is the Bircher Müsli. When you see the picture now, I think everybody will remember this dish Yeah, that actually comes from Switzerland, the same as the sliced Wiel, which is a classic dish an absolute highlight which you need to try in um, Switzerland. And there's this one hotel chain, by the way, it's called Mövenpick Hotel. As I uh, mentioned before, uh, that was my first station in a foreign country, my first workplace, the Mövenpick Hotel Zurich Airport. I altogether I worked three times at this Swiss company, Mövenpick is a Swiss company, it used to be a Swiss company, I'm not sure, but they still carry the brand and when whenever you travel to any Mervyn Pick Hotel uh, worldwide, they will still sell these classic Swiss dishes like the sliced veal with a potato rusty, which is also a very, very typical classic Swiss dish. And you also have, of course, cheese fondue, which is I think popular among many, many people, not with me so much. I'm not a fondue guy, but you know, uh, people in Switzerland, of course, they love fondue. It is, uh, it's, it's a traditional family thing. It's, it's very, it's a cultural thing, very traditionally in Switzerland. And this is when you get together, you know, with the family and friends or colleagues, and then you, you sit down and you hang out and you enjoy a nice a cheese fondue. So what made this time in Switzerland so uh, special and impacting to me? And what did I actually learn? What is my resume? What is the thing when people ask me, hey chef, uh, three and a half years in Switzerland, what was your takeaway? So uh, since it was my first station abroad, definitely had a great impact and I mentioned that already. I basically 
could smell the world. You know, I got to know a lot of uh, different people from all parts of the world, not only from Germany, even you have a, a big crowd of Germans working in Switzerland. And it is for many Germans actually the start. You know, they go to Switzerland as a young chef or a young waitress or a young waiter. They move to Switzerland to gain experience because Switzerland is recognized as a great country on your resume, you know, because the hospitality is on such a high level. Switzerland is a tourist destination. They need hospitality workers. They need chefs. They are, uh, they are uh, in short supply. So they need foreign workers. So this is what many, many Germans do. They move there right after their traineeship, apprenticeship, and they gain some experience. Some go back to Germany, but many people, they remain in Switzerland. And I know a lot of people, former colleagues from like 20 years ago, they are still not working in Switzerland. And I tell you what, I can absolutely understand because the salary is much better in Switzerland. The taxes are just lower yeah, than in Germany because Germany is uh, a tax hell. It's not a tax haven, it's a tax hell. So, but that's a different story. Yeah, so I got to know a lot of German people, of course, which made it very comfortable in the beginning for me. You know, uh, my English was not, uh, uh, certainly not on that level as I'm speaking now. My English actually sucked at the, at the time. So it was very convenient. Uh, also, when you felt a little bit homesick, that you could converse with your uh, native people, you know. But later on, you know, I met people from Canada, from the US, from New Zealand, from all over the place, from India. And the, the, the taste of interna international, the, the international flavor, which I got to taste really kind of also uh, made me very curious and then kind of inspired me to, to learn more. Even I was not ready yet to move to the next country. That's why I stayed three and a half years. But after three and a half years, I made my big move to the United States. And I was ready then at the time and I knew that was the right thing to do. So overall, this Zurich and Switzerland experience uh, molded me into the person or it, it helped to mold me uh, and become the person who I am today. It made a big impact on my career and my personal life. What do I like about Switzerland? I also mentioned it already. I like the people, they're very easygoing and open-minded. It makes you feel very comfortable there. Yeah. And uh, then of course, uh, the nature, the beauty of the country. You have so many opportunities to travel around the country and see so many different things. It's a clean place. It's a, a safe place. And uh, what I don't like so much in Switzerland, uh, as you can probably imagine, are the prices. Switzerland is a relatively expensive country. This is true. Yeah, you need to have some money in order to survive there. Uh, Switzerland is actually, compared to other European countries, very, very expensive. This is the only downturn, but uh, if you put everything and balance it, and uh, yeah, you know, if somebody would offer me a, a job in Switzerland today, I at least would consider, you know. Uh, it's not that I will uh, jump right right away and would say, yeah, I take it, but I would consider, you know, because there are a lot of benefits, a lot of benefits, and then you have some uh, other things which are not so great benefits, but yeah, it's a pricey country, but on the other side, you know, when you live and work there, you also get a uh, the salary will be accordingly and uh, trust me you can save still a lot of money and you have more net in your wallet than uh, in Germany. Uh, that's the reality. And of course I learned English in Switzerland and how was that? Yeah I met a girl and she was from New Zealand. Uh, today she is my ex-girlfriend. It's a long long time ago. But uh, even she spoke a little bit of German. It forced me and I wanted to to learn English and all her girlfriends, they came from Canada and from other English speaking countries. So uh, yeah, I was kind of forced also to learn English. So that is uh, one thing I remember. 
that I finally started to practice my English. Do I recommend Switzerland? Absolutely yes. Please check it out. Go there, travel there, or if you have a chance to take up a job, then please do so. Go there and gain some great experience. All right, I'm done for today. I hope you like this little introduction video to Switzerland. I know there's much more to say, many more things I could share here with you. Today we don't have the time, but if you want to read more about my adventures in Switzerland, then you can read this in, the, in this book here. It's called Slamming It Out. And uh, this book is for all who want to become a better and more professional chef. Inside there are great tips, tricks and other tools which will help you on your journey. And uh, as I said, my story is in the book. My, all my workstations, all my adventures in Switzerland and all the other adventures in Vietnam and Hong Kong and Indonesia and Malaysia and uh, other things are all in this book. All you can read it in here. It's available on Amazon and Kindle or Kindle. And if you are already working in the kitchen and if you are already leading small, medium or large teams, then I have something great for you. If you go to the description section, then you will find a link. And this link will bring you directly to my newly released um, online course on Udemy. It's called Leadership Skills how to become a powerful team leader. So if you want to improve your communication skills, if you want to improve your listening skills, if you want to know why delegating is so important and why it is so important also to understand why praising your staff, your team members in public is crucial, then check out this course I hope it will help you on your journey to develop your leadership as uh, leadership skills to the next level. Other than that, I'm checking out for today. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, then please click the like button, of course, give me a thumbs up and any questions you have, comments or concerns, please put it in the comment sections. That's it for today. Thank you uh, for being here. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy and stay safe. And don't forget, always keep slamming it out. Take care. Bye bye.